Hello and welcome to Mastering Portrait Photography. In this short video, I'm gonna show you how you can achieve these amazing visuals for showing your clients how your images may look on their walls. Okay, so let's start. I've brought up here one of the simplest room sets. We're going to step through three room sets, a simple frame on a wall, a multi-image collection, and then a canvas. These room sets were all designed to try and be realistic. They're not so flashy. They are real rooms as best as we can make them so that your clients will be convinced that buying a picture from you and putting it in a frame or buying a framed image from you is exactly what they would like to do. So, Let's start. This is uh, room set number three. If you go onto our website, if you go onto Mastering Portrait Photography, you'll find this as room set three. So you'll see in the layers palette, this, all of this, all of the edits happen in the layers palette. You don't need to do any pixel editing. It's all layers. So firstly, you'll see there are in this particular file, three distinct layers. There's the reflections, there's a, a group called frame, and then there's a background layer that's called wall and frame. And in some of the later room sets, it's simply called background. And we need to be able to change the image in that frame and make it look ultra convincing. So what we do is we open up the group that's called frame or frame image, and we double click on the smart object. Now a smart object is simply a way of embedding a second or third or fourth Photoshop file. It's called a PSB file rather than a PSD file. And it just means it's embedded inside the file that you've downloaded. This is really useful because as you can see, it's got a single layer. That layer is a frame type object or a frame type layer. And we're going to change the image in it. So all you do is you click on the little left hand icon that denotes the frame. And you'll see now it's giving me a little bit of information in the middle of the screen, the image that's in there. Uh, it's showing me the extents of the image that's in there. The hard, this hard boundary around the edge is the extent of this particular image. Um, and here, this is the bit you're looking for, is it says in inset image up in the properties window. You click on there, click on place from local disk embedded, and then you can go and find your image. Alternatively, uh, you can simply grab another window, drag an image from it straight into there. And that's all you need to do. Now, we're just going to make sure that it fills the frame. So you go command T or edit free transform. I'm going to hold down the Alt key so it stretches uniformly around the center point, rather. And then I'm going to double click, commit that. And all I need to do now is close this .psb, this second Photoshop file. And there you have it. It's dropped it straight into the frame. Now, if you're looking at that like me, as I am on this screen, it looks great, but it's not convincing. So let's deal with two different parts of that. Firstly, the reflections. Let's just get rid of those for a moment. That's taken away the sense that it's behind glass. We're going to put them back, but we're going to tune them. But firstly, let's get the, the way this is showing on the screen, the way the image of Dory, as it is in this particular image, is showing in that frame. She's too bright. And this is one of my bugbears when it comes to um, room sets and synthetic images where it just doesn't look real. It's not convincing. So we can do a couple of things. The first thing I will do is let's just try... Uh, changing the opacity of the group. Let's just try that. Let's just see what happens if I just bring that down. That's not bad, actually. It always feels like you should have a really punchy image, but of course, in a room set like this, the ambient light, the texture in the lighting is going to affect the outcome, as is all of the rest of the lit material around it. All of that light pings around and affects your image. Now, I don't think that's too bad, but it still doesn't look convincing to me. So what I'm going to do instead is let's just try changing the layer mode of that group at the moment it's set to pass through which just means um the light the sorry the the layers below just come up to the surface and it just renders them but if we change that maybe to multiply well, that's not bad but now it's looking a bit sepia let's just push that opacity all the way up still looking a bit sepia to me because it's carrying some of the color from the background through a bit too much so maybe we have a look at uh, well, vivid light, no, it's too much. Maybe hard light, hard light. Now we're getting somewhere. It's beginning to feel a little bit more like the image that I intended. Again, let's just bring that opacity down a little. 
And each image, each individual image that you put in here will behave completely differently. So I don't know, let's try, uh, let's go back and bring a different image in. I'll double click on here again. Again, I'm going to bring up a finder. Uh, let's find a dark image. Let's drop a dark image in there. Okay, again, I'm just going to Command T to go to the transform. Hold down the Alt key and sort of drag that around so it looks how I might like it. Again, close this and save it and let's have a look. Yeah, now that's looking pretty good. Now you'll also notice in some of these files that there's a little drop down next to this smart object. And this just allows me to tune the noise in the image, in, the, in my framed image, and the blurring. Because if it's too sharp and it's too clean, it'll never look like it's part of this scene. So all you do, if, if you find a blurring layer and you want to tune it, you double click on it, it'll bring it up. And of course, because this is a smart object, it will let me tune it. So if I bring it all the way, you can see the effect it's having. <laughs> Obviously, you don't, that just looks like myopic. So it looks like the photographer took it through water. But if you tune it down to about 0.5 or 0.6, somewhere around there, 0.7 um, pixels of blur, it just sits it into the frame correctly because if it's too sharp, it's never going to look real. Um, if you render these up properly and actually include the image in the render, you'll always see that the image is slightly softer than you'd expect. Again, though, this, this particular image is a little bit grainy, so I've added a noise layer as well. And you can tune that. So again, if I bring that all the way up, you can see exactly what it's doing. So let's just take that down right away. It doesn't need to be very much. I'm going to do it by keys and I. Let's just see where we get to. Because I don't want my image to look grainy, but I want my image to sit into the um, scene correctly. And I think it's round about there, maybe, maybe two and a half, something like that. That looks okay. I'm going to close that. Right, so now I've got my image. So I've had to tune it a little bit, but I want this to look really genuinely real, like the client really has this on their window. So you have to put in a little bit of effort because I can't, we can't build these so they automatically reflect how your image interacts. Um, now I'm going to put the reflections back on. So if I bring the opacity of this all the way up to 100, you can see how strong the reflections might be. Now, if you're doing a slideshow, where the client's not actually going to sit and look at these images, you just want it to look uber real, then a really strong reflection is great. But of course, if you're trying to show this to a client as a pitch, you know, dear madam or dear sir, we think you should have this picture on your wall, they're going to question those reflections. So you need to just get them under control. And all you do is just change the opacity. These are usually the layer, the mode for this layer is normally set to screen, as that seems to give the best um, angle sorry, the best interaction of the uh, reflections with the rest of the scene. So all you do is bring that up and down until it looks like it's still nice and glassy, it's glossy, it's shiny, it has everything you need to convince the client that uh, an image behind glass is what they should buy. And that is it. You've got a tuned, finished, beautiful rendition of an image, uh, of your image behind glass on a wall. But what about something like an acrylic? So if I bring up this one now, you can see this is uh, a collection. It's a Saparito. These are Graffi's um, Acrylic Pros. That's what they're modelled on. Uh, these are Steve Saparito. This is one of Staff Steve's, Steve can't even say it. Steve Saparito's uh, collection designs. We've got our own as well, but we've also, over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be producing all of Steve Saparito's collections so that the Graffi customers uh, can use them uh, with ease. Uh, so what I'm going to do is let's just step through the various bits of this file. Again, familiar to you, we've got a reflections layer. We've already just talked about that on and off. I'm going to turn it off for a moment just while we plant the images in. We've got the frame images. This, again, is the set of layers, the smart objects, where we're going to actually insert our images. But this file also has a color changing layer. Everything else so far is exactly the same, but this particular file has the ability to change the color of certain parts of the decor of the room. That's useful if you know, for instance, your client would never have a white dining room like this, or your client has a very specific color and they're wondering if the images that you've created would sit well with that. So what we do is we go into the color changing layer, double click on the little icon here. This is the wall color, so we double click on that and we can change that really all day. I mean, be sensible. If you go over here, it's never going to look real. Okay. So you have to sort of keep it under control. Uh, again, you have to choose your layer mode depending what color you're trying to portray. The masking is done. The tooling is done. But now it's down to you and how you want it to look. So if I just bring that down here, all I want to do is just darken it off a little bit. And multiply is great for this, the multiply layer mode. 
Now, if you find you want a punchier colour, you want it to show through, if it's a vibrant, poppy kind of room, uh, be careful on this one, by the way, uh, because the light showing through the bowl doesn't do the uh, doesn't co doesn't um, colour change correctly. Uh, so just look out for little tails like that. So if we just double click, I'm going to take that down and out of the way a little bit. But if you want a punchier colour, change the mode from multiply to overlay. Okay, and again, let's just double click on here and just drag it into the colours. And you see now I can create much brighter colours. Um, but I, you've just got to be careful that it stays convincing. I don't think these always look quite so uh, real. Now, if you want to go for that kind of look, that's fine. I'm going to stick with my uh, multiply and I'm going to just knock that into the background a little bit. Similarly, in this image, you can also change the colour of the side. So the default colour, actually, of these Pro Acrylics in this particular model is white. But that just looks a bit strong coming off the wall. So again, all I'm going to do is double click on uh, the colour changer and I can just... No, no, hang on. I'm going to click on it and enable it. Double click on it. This also is set to multiply. And you can see that if I want those, uh, if I want black sides, uh, which is, of course, the other really common type of something like the Acrylic Pro. I just drag the, the colour all the way down, and there you go, I've got black. It still doesn't look too convincing, so I'm just going to lift that a little, just take the edge off it so that it sits well on that wall, and there you go. Everything else exactly the same. If you want to change an image, you expand it, uh, double-click on the layer, find your finder, drag in an image, Command-T just to make sure it's sat there. I'm just going to expand that a little bit. Close it, and that's planted it in there. You tune it exactly the same way. You get it to sit into the scene in exactly the same way. So that's how you do this with a room that you can color change. But what about a canvas? Because canvases have their own unique challenges. Well, we've got one or two of those up there as well. So again, exactly the same thing. This is one which we're still building, so you can see uh, the different layers that we use here as we're putting them together. Um, again, it's got a wall color change if I want to use it. So that's without the wall color change. That's with it. Um, and if I go and find the canvas image, now here's what's different. I'm going to double click on this canvas image now. And it brings it up. But notice something about this image. When I drag it in, when I drag in, sorry, let me just click on there. And I drag in an image. Let's see if we can find one with a reference point on it. Uh, let's use, actually, let's use this one here. Okay, so again, I'm going to scale up my image. Command T, and I'm just holding down the Alt key to scale it around a section. Now let's have a quick look. I'm going to just lift that up a little bit. Now, what's different about a canvas image is when I commit this and I bring it back, is you lose some of your image. Why? Well, of course, this type of canvas, a wrapped canvas, actually has canvas around the edges. And on a canvas, you lose about five inches, give or take. So there's two and a half inches, in fact, with, a, with these graphy uh, canvases, there's 2.3 images on the side, 2.3 inches on the side, and then there's a little bit left behind the edge. We've allowed five inches to give you some wiggle room. This is modeled relatively accurately so that when you take your image and you drop it onto the canvas, then it looks correct. So whatever size image you've got, it's wrapped it around the edges, you've lost some uh, information. So if you look, for instance, here at Dory's eyebrow and where it touches the edge of that canvas, if I double click and go back to the crop that I provided, you can see there's plenty of headroom on there. And that's because the canvas, it's simulating what happens as it wraps around. So that's how to do that. Very straightforward. Uh, we've got all sorts of looks coming. Uh, so this is a daylight one. We're going to do some nighttime ones, which are just a little bit more uh, complicated to get the lighting to look absolutely right. Uh, another daylight and another lit one. So these are the things we're doing. This is how uh, you receive the files. When you go onto the website and you download it, you get a PSD file, something like this. You will have to fine tune them. But trust me, the rewards are every bit worth it. So until next time, enjoy them and be kind to yourself. Take care, guys. Oh,